Thank you, Elana, for the introduction. Hello, everyone. In this webinar, we focus on the future of connectivity for the transportation industry. Intelligent connection between data, processes, and people are at the core of our mobility and is bound to shape the future of transport. Our range of transportation and mobility antennas is the antenna of choice on a wide variety of vehicles that range from caravans, motorhomes, emergency service vehicles, truck and trailers, camper vans, and luxury coaches. In the first few slides on our agenda today, Peter will illustrate what you can consider when you're looking for a good mobility antenna from an RF perspective. This will be followed by a product overview of our current mobility antenna range. Ernest will showcase you our antennas in the field by showing you a variety of case studies in the field, which will be followed by the typical applications of our antennas in the different industries. Afterwards, we will show you an action-packed footage of antennas undergoing environmental tests just to show you how rugged they are and why they are applicable to the transport industry. We'll then show you how to mount the mobility antennas and use our antennas with your preferred router. Finally, Anes will introduce the UDAS and our new and exciting antennas in this range. Let's get started. Peter will now point out the difference between a good and a poor mobility antenna from an RF perspective. Over to you, Peter. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. Uh, can everybody hear me okay? Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, right. So when you look at the, at the benefits of a good mobility antenna, there are several factors that we need to, uh, to look at. However, one of the things that, you, that we uh, pride ourselves in is the fact that our antennas have a very good, very good radiation pattern. When we look at antenna radiation patterns, it is important to note that we are looking at two-dimensional renditions of what is happening in three-dimensional space. The horizontal plane, or azimuth plane, is a view of the pattern from the top, as if it were sliced down the middle. The vertical plane, or elevation plane, is a view of the pattern from the side, as if it were sliced down the middle. Antennas are often measured and advertised by how much gain they have. But this can be misleading without considering the propagation of signal on the radiation patterns. Right, so the horizontal radiation pattern is extremely, extremely important, uh, specifically from, from a mobility point of view. So what you see over here are a couple of towers. There's four towers. We're going to have a bus and our bus has a radiation pattern that is less than ideal, as you can see. When the bus starts off, it's, it starts off with a, with a very good signal, as you can see, four bars. And as the, as the bus moves, you'll see it starts, due to the poor radiation pattern, it starts losing signal. And as it makes the turn here, you'll see that it's only getting a slight signal due to the poor radiation pattern from that uh, tower at the top of the screen. It does have good signal along the, along the road. Uh, as you can see, due to that particular tower, but as it makes the turn, again, due to the poor radiation pattern, it loses signal. And as it, it, as it um, uh, travels along the road there, you see it loses signal altogether. So let's contrast that with a, uh, with a good antenna. A good antenna, obviously, with a, a better radiation pattern. So there's our bus. We're going to fit it with our pointing antenna. And there you can see our uh, radiation pattern. So as the bus moves down and makes the turn, you'll see that it keeps on connecting to towers due to that uh, much better than before radiation pattern. You'll see as it moves along the road now, you'll see it'll connect to the tower to the right of the bus. And as it makes the turn up at the top there, you, you'll see that it still has a good connection due to the good radiation, the horizontal radiation pattern. And even if it moves into, the, into, the, uh, into that particular area where previously it lost the signal, it, uh, although it's not full bars, it's not losing the signal at all. Over to you, Beth. Yes, 
You okay. Yes, sorry. Yeah, sorry about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. One of our high end high demand mobility antennas is the Park Series antenna. It is named after the hockey puck due to its small size and shape and provides the best possible balance between size, performance, and the cost for large-scale M2M and IoT deployment. It's an omnidirectional transportation and automotive 5G antenna and comes in various models, ranging from a five-in-one. By a five-in-one, I mean it's five antennas in one enclosure to a single LTE model and a GPS model. The flagship of this antenna is a five-in-one antenna that comprises of two LTE 5G antennas ranging from 617 megahertz to the 4.2 gigahertz, covering the 3.5 gigahertz CBRS 5G band. It comes with two Wi-Fi antennas, which covers the 2.4 gigahertz and 5 to 7.2 gigahertz, which covers the um, latest generation of Wi-Fi, which is Wi-Fi 6E, and also is future-proof for the next generation Wi-Fi 7. It comes with one GPS active antenna that can operate in temperatures as low as negative 40, which is a very important fact that can, we can work in uh, extreme weather conditions. On the mechanical side of things, the radon, which is the antenna enclosure, is made of UV stable SAA material for the white versions and ABS material for the black versions. And this protects the enclosure from erosion in case the antenna is used in a corrosive environment. The antennas are IP69K rated, which means they are completely dust proof and protected from, from high pressure jets of water without affecting the performance of the antenna. The antennas are vandal proof and, and rugged and have an IK10 impact rating. The antennas come with two meters cable that are fitted with SMA connectors and comply with the different automotive safety standards for horizontal ban. So another high demand mobility antenna in our range is the BIMO series antenna. It's also an omnidirectional transportation and automotive 5G antenna just like the park but this one looks like a shark's fin. So you may ask yourself why it's bigger than the previous part. It's bigger because we had, we had to achieve the desired performance from 400 to 3.8 gigahertz. And to do this, we had to make the antennas bigger and overall the enclosure had to be bigger. The overall, the, this antenna comes in different models with the flagship being a seven in one. That means it has seven antennas in one housing. It has a four 5G, 4G or LTE antennas that cover the 410 to 3.8 gigahertz band. This of course covers the 3.5 gigahertz CBRS 5G band. It comes with two Wi-Fi antennas covering 2.4 and the 5 to 7.2 gigahertz, just like the park antenna covered previously. It also comes with a one active GPS GLONASS antenna. On the mechanical side of things, the radom is also protected from erosion in case it's used in a corrosive environment. It's IP69K rated, meaning it's dust proof and, and is protected from high pressure jets of water without affecting the performance of your antenna. They are rugged and vandal proof with an IK10 rating, just as the park antenna. And they also come with two meter cables fitted with SMA connectors that comply to the different automotive safety standards. Ernest will now show you a few cases of study of case studies of our mobile antennas in the field. Over to you, Ernest. Thank you, Beth. So yes, I'll be looking at a few cases and examples where our PAC and WIMO 3 antenna are currently being deployed in the field. So firstly, we have our on to the next one, we have our puck antenna, which is currently contributing to road safety in the Netherlands. In the first minutes of a road accident or road maintenance, the traffic is still moving at high speeds, making it highly dangerous to secure an accident. A vehicle management system named the AutoDrip 2.0 was then developed to help with traffic congestion and create safer traffic working conditions for road maintenance employees in these situations. The AutoDrip 2.0 has a full color display mounted onto the back of an incident vehicle which is visible from approximately 500 meters away. This play can be controlled remotely by the road user by using an app on a tablet. 
and they wanted to, an, an automotive antenna and, out, and decided to use our Puck 5 antenna, which was incorporated onto the, the vehicle management system for reliable communication and connectivity. Currently, more than 250 vehicle management systems will be deployed to improve road safety and create safer working conditions in the Netherlands. And up next is, uh, we have our, so that was with the PUC, and now with our MIMO 3, which is currently being implemented as the OEM antenna for Airstream in the USA. So not sure if everyone is familiar with the Airstream brand, but to give some background, Airstream is known as the Rolls Royce of travel trailers in the USA. And, and they develop high quality solutions for the adventurous people and families that love the great outdoors. Therefore, to provide a high quality product, Airstream has chosen our MIMO 3 antenna as the go-to antenna for solution for their high-end travel trailers, allowing their customers to be connected to the rest of the world while no matter where they are in the world. So, and currently, more than 5,000 Airstream tra travel trailers have been kitted with our MIMO 3 antenna. And staying on the topic of our MIMO 3, we move next from, uh, from, from off-road, so we next move to our MIMO 3, which was used in the Certos 2020 rally in Brazil. The Certos 2020 Rally is a rally red competition that has started in 1993. The, the X Rally team support vehicle was paired with the MIMO 3-50 antenna, which contains two LTE, two Wi-Fi, and one GPS antenna, with a Teltonica RUT 955 router. In the previous years, the teams had to drive approximately 40 kilometers to connect to the nearest base station or use their satellite phones to report back, back to their base of operations. But with our MIMO 3-50 antenna, the X-ray team was amazed with the performance. There was no need to use their sat phone and it offered seamless connectivity during the entire race. And that, this was in 2020. And in 2021, everyone saw that the, the X-ray team got fantastic performance with the MIMO 3 antenna and within it, and on the next one, the bit. And in the 2021 uh, Certos rally, uh, the year there after we had reports that various teams have fitted the MIMO 3 antenna onto the actual rally rate vehicles for Siemens connectivity. And here's some live footage captured of the Exert Competition's Mitsubishi L200 RS going through the track with our MIMO 3 mounted on top. <laughs> Bit of a disconnect between the sound and the video, but apologies for that. And then lastly is a, is a case study where our MIMO 3 is being used to help the Singapore police. The Singapore police force has developed a high-tech police car for 2024. One of the stringent requirements for the high-tech police vehicle was to have uninterrupted connectivity with the police operations command center. They have tested various other mobility antennas and found that the MIMO 3 delivered fantastic performance. The MIMO 3 will enable them to to have live video streaming of high resolution video footage to the command center and live vehicle tracking in highly remote conditions. More than 300 high tech police vehicles will be operational with our MIMO 3 antenna and helping the Singapore police keep the streets safe. Now, this is just a glimpse of where our PUC and MIMO 3 antennas are being used, but are being used in various other verticals, as Beth will now explain. Thank you, Beth. Back to you. Thank you, Ernest. <laughs> So our MIMO and PAC antennas are a great choice for the transport industry due to their size, their ruggedness, and the flexible mounting options they come with. The antennas can be used to ensure secure, reliable, and fast connection while you're on the move. This is applicable for commercial trucks, passenger buses, motorhomes, caravans, public safety vehicles, just to mention a few. In mining, the MIMO and the PAC antennas are a great choice for enhancing productivity and safety within the mine, be it for real-time data, data visualization, cloud computing, or automated machinery. In farming and agriculture, our antennas are used in smart farming, for example, in the use of automated tractors, robot-assisted irrigation systems, robots for planting and harvesting, which will aid in optimizing food production. In factory automation, our antennas are used in the automation of the manufacturing process, which will boost quality, increase productivity, and help to reduce the cost of production. Last but not least, our mobility antennas will boost your internet connectivity on a boat, ship, yacht, or near the coastlines or inner waters. 
So what makes our antennas uh, a great choice for the marine applications is the fact that, apart from their versatility, of course, is the fact that they are IP69K rated, which means that, that you will not lose connectivity even during the most severe storms at sea. So we decided to put our antennas to the test and performed environmental tests on them. These tests are equivalent to the expected environmental conditions that the antennas could encounter over their lifespan. Let's watch the footage. So from the footage, you can clearly see our antennas are rugged and still remain functional, no matter what the weather conditions they are exposed to. And that's why we recommend them for your transportation applications. So Peter will now show you the different ways you can mount uh, your pointing mobility antenna and show you the different derivatives for both the PAX and the MIMO. Over to you, Peter. Thank you, Beth. Now, uh, being a mobile antenna, of course, you need to mount your antenna somewhere. So let me take you through the different mounting options that we have with our pointing antennas. So the first one is the magnetic mount. Uh, obviously, uh, this needs to be mounted on a surface that would be, be able to attract the, the, the magnets. What is important here is that it's on a flat surface. So this is uh, very well suited for flat surfaces where the, the magnets can make, uh, make proper contact. Just clear, clean the area uh, where you're going to mount the antenna and, uh, and you'll see that the cable then comes out at the back, very much like you saw that, that rally vehicle that, uh, that Ernest showed us uh, earlier. The next one is the spigot mount. Uh, this obviously necessitates the, the drilling of a hole in uh, uh, either the vehicle or the trailer or the uh, cabinet that's part of the vehicle where it's going to be mounted. We have two options for you. The, at the top, you'll see the pack with a re removable long spigot. Uh, and then at the bottom, you see the MIMO with a shorter spigot. Obviously, the spigot can be used with either the, uh, the MIMO or the uh, pack antenna. Next one is the surface mount. Uh, this surface mount makes use of a double-sided adhesive pad. Uh, very important that we need to mount this on a, also on a flat surface. Uh, clean the surface uh, just very, very well. And this uh, adhesive pad will, will stay on there for a very, very long time. Last and certainly not least is the, is the bracket mount. The, the bracket mount is suitable for installing the pack antenna and the pack antenna only. Uh, on the side of a vehicle, you'll also see that the, the back end of the, the, the L bracket has a groove in it so that it can be pole mounted or even on, uh, on rear view mirrors on, the, on larger vehicles where the Rear view mirror is mounted on one of those, those uh, pole mounts that uh, is part of the vehicle. Right, next, next I'm going to show you the, uh, the different antennas in our series. First of all, all of our antennas uh, in the minor series, as you can see, covers the frequency range 410 megahertz to 3.8 gigahertz. It's an omnidirectional antenna, and obviously starting at 410 megahertz, it includes the 450 meg uh, band. It also covers the band 71, the 617 meg band. And then at the top, it uh, covers the GPRS, the CPRS band. Uh, the CP, uh, CBRS band is the 3.5 gig that is so well known. And then 
Also, of course, as uh, Beth showed us earlier, uh, those are all the mechanical specifications that each one of these antennas uh, adhere to. The first one in, this, in the series is the MIMO 312. That includes a 2x2 MIMO LTE antenna with a gain of 5.8 dBi. The 13 is uh, the MIMO 12 with an added GPS antenna. That's a 21 dBi GPS antenna. Following that is the 14. Now the MIMO 314 uh, has a newer antenna, a 4x4 MIMO LTE antenna that has a gain of 6.2 dBi. And with this particular antenna, we've included the GPS uh, antenna for you, uh, the 21 dBi GPS antenna. That is followed by the 15. Now what we did with the MIMO 315 was to make use of our 2x2 MIMO LTE antenna, but we've now included a 2x2 MIMO Wi-Fi dual band antenna. And as you can see, that dual band antenna covers the range 2.4 to 2.5 gig in, in, the, in the lower range and 5 to 7.2 gig for those Wi-Fi 6 applications, the 802.11, AX and the BE. And then we also have the GPS antenna for you on that one. Then uh, to the flagship, at the top you will see that both the MIMO 315 and the MIMO 317 comes in either a white radome or a black radome. Now with the MIMO 317, we've included our 4x4 MIMO LTE antenna and then the 2x2 MIMO Wi-Fi dual band, as I mentioned before. Uh, and included in that as the flagship is the GPS antenna. Right, so let's have a look at our PAC series. The PAC series, uh, the frequency on uh, that's a 4G, 5G antenna. It starts at uh, 617 megahertz to 4.2 gigahertz. Also omnidirectional antenna uh, covering obviously with that frequency, uh, those frequency range to band 71. Also, the CBRS band, the 3.5, and then the mechanical specifications, as we've shown you before. The first one in the series is the PAC-1. That is simply a SISO antenna covering the range 617 to 4. Uh, uh, 617 megahertz to 4.2 gigahertz. The PAC-2 is the, uh, there we've included our 2x2 MIMO antenna, the 6 dBi antenna. Then we move on to the PAC-4. With the PAC-4, we've taken the 2x2 MIMO antenna and we've added a GPS antenna, 6 dBi on the uh, MIMO and the 21 on the GPS. And then on the PAC-5, what we did there was to uh, take the 2x2 MIMO uh, LTE antenna, include with it a 2x2 uh, dual band Wi-Fi antenna, and then with that one, we've included the GPS antenna, really the flagship of our PAC series. Then with the PAC-7, the, for those applications where a person would need the PAC-5 but doesn't really need the GPS, we've taken the GP, uh, GPS antenna out of that. And then with the PAC-8, what we did with the PAC-8 was we've used our 2x2 MIMO LTE antenna. And for those, uh, those routers that as a single Wi-Fi, we've got the dual band Wi-Fi, but with a SISO, single in, single out uh, connection. Thank you, Beth. Then the, in, the same, in the same format as the PAC, we've got two other antennas. So you'll see that these are two omnidirectional antennas with the same mechanical specifications as our PAC. The first one being the uh, GPS one. We, we've uh, we've simply taken our uh, GPS antenna and put it in a puck in a puck radar. And then the second one, which uh, which again is uh, available in either a white radar or a black radar, is our puck twelve. And that is simply our our Wi-Fi dual band Wi-Fi two by two antenna in the in the puck format. Thank you, Beth. Thank you, Pirat. So how do you connect our mobility antennas? Our antennas come with clearly marked color-coded heat shrinks for LTE, 5G, Wi-Fi, and GPS. So what a user need to do is identify these antenna cables on the antenna and then connect it to the respective 
antenna port or the router port uh, of, 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 it, of the router. In this instance, the Wi-Fi is green, green coded, color coded, and the user just needs to connect the Wi-Fi to the antenna ports of the router. Similarly, the LTE antenna ports should be connected to the LTE main and aux of the router, as well as a GPS if your router has GPS. So similarly, the MIMO 3 also comes with clearly labeled color-coded heat shrinks for LTE, 5G, Wi-Fi, and GPS. And all a user needs to do is identify these cables or on the antenna and connect them respectively to, its, to their own router ports. Ernest will now introduce you to the UDA system and illustrate to you how you can use them with our mobility antennas. Over to you, Ernest. Thank you, Beth. So a unique product we developed last year and released was our a product called our UDAS, also known as a, I wanted to actually call our, our micro DAS, which means a micro distributed antenna system. And a DAS system is an inline coupling of antennas, but uh, this is a much smaller micro than that. So it, our UDAS is a extremely wide band type of coupler antennas, almost like a leaky feeder, but not exactly a leaky feeder. So our UDAS antenna offers a extremely wide band and, and coverage from 617 all the way to 6,000 megahertz, making it ideal for either 5G and LTE applications as well as dual band Wi-Fi applications. And it also offers 2x2 two two MIMO for improved performance. And, and the amount of power this radiates into a small enclosed space is a, is a 1 to 10. So if you connect this in line with your antenna, it only radiates 10% of the, of the actual radiated power which is not a lot, but just enough for, to radiate an enclosed space. And from a mechanical point of view, the antenna also offers uh, the same rugged and rugged and um, rugged design as our normal mobility antennas. So it does offer chemical protection and is foam full. So it offers IP68, making it ideal for mobility applications and is IK10 rated, making it strong enough to withstand any adverse weather conditions. And you might be wondering, okay, this is quite interesting, but where do you actually will use the UDAS? What's the what's the use case for it? So let's say, for instance, the the airstream travel trailer. So you connect your LTE antenna to your to your MIMO three, but it's still not nothing is everything is radiating outside, but nothing is radiating on the inside because the the body is made of aluminium, so it's more of a Faraday cage. So everything is radiating outside, but nothing you won't get any Wi-Fi on the inside. So you can then connect your UDAS in line with your router and then you will be able to get Wi-Fi coverage on the inside of the trailer as well as on the outside making it a perfect case so you can get happy happy kids playing on the outside of the caravan and watching TikTok and you have your parents on the inside laying on the bed and, and watching Netflix and also having Wi-Fi and connected to the, the camp Wi-Fi so that's a that's a quite our, our interesting implementation of our UDAS. It can be used for many other applications as well as for mining or, or, or other transportation applications. But uh, yeah, it's quite a unique product we add, added to our mobility range. And then what's new to our current mobility lineup? So we currently we currently have our PUC and our MIMO, MIMO 3, but the puck might be too small and the MIMO 3 might be too big. So then we thought of designing our MIMO 4, also known as our armadillo antenna. Now this will be a much larger version of the puck, but smaller than our MIMO, th MIMO, MIMO 3. So the flagship of our MIMO 4 will allow for a 9-in-1 antenna. So it offers four dual-band Wi-Fi antennas that offer dual-band coverage from 2.4 and 5 to 7.2 gigahertz, as well as four LTE antennas with four 4G and 5G coverage from 617 all the way to 6,000 megahertz, and as well as a, a GPS antenna as standard with any mobility antenna. And regarding mechanical aspects, it will include all the various aspects that we, we currently have on our pack and our MIMO 3, so it will have a, a, a sufficient chemical protection, uh, it will have an IP69K rating to make it ideal for, for, uh, for mounting onto a vehicle and washing it with a high pressure washers and the antenna will still deliver the same fantastic performance. It will also have IK10 making it ideal for, 
for any harsh conditions as is as with mining now it, it, it only we're just showing the black version here what it will be available in white and black so it's something on which what the, the needs of the customer are now the, the MIMO 4 will also include additional mounting options as it, as it's standard with our our puck and our MIMO 3 so it will include all the magnetic mounts and surface mount options as there was a pole mounting with the bracket and the spigot mounting as everyone has come to to known and, and to grips with on our pucks now MIMO 3 so it will offer all the same versatility as our puck and MIMO 3 antennas and we plan on launching this later this year so it will it's, it's around the corner and then another product all we're also looking at is a is a completely different form factor than our pucks and our MIMOs so this is an omni antenna and what we call our viper antenna so this will be the use case for this will be more on the trucker side, so more on truck antennas or, or pickup trucks, more mounting this onto bull bars, and it will offer 4G, 4G and 5G coverage from 617 all the way to 3.8 gig with a peak gain of 2.5 dBi, which is sufficient for, for uh, low coverage areas. And we will be bringing out two versions, a size model as well as a 2x2 MIMO, MIMO model for future proof implementation. And it will also offer the same exact mechanical specifications that we offer with our other mobility antennas with the IP68 and IK10 ratings, making this ideal for, for any mobility implementations. So how does the these mobility antennas actually compare to each other? So this is just a bit of a cheat sheet or the key differences to all our mobility antennas, as you can see. So overall overall size, you can see our MIMO 3 is the largest, with our puck being the smallest. And our MIMO 4 being that the in between, just the the medium solution between them, and the Viper antenna being the the completely different form factor, but still a mobility antenna. And you can see the the flagship model being the MIMO 4 being the largest one, being with well the, the big offering the most antennas with the nine in one. So yeah, this is just a bit of a cheat sheet that you can also compare all the other antennas and see what fits your needs and and your requirements. So. Yeah. That's an all from my side. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Ernest. Um, but thank you for joining us and we'll chat again next time. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye.